Alrighty, boys. Today's video is all about my favorite zombies map, Ancient Evil. It's been a little while since I played this map, if I'm honest. But uh, this is the map that I refer to as my favorite. I just have a lot of fun with this map. It, it's one, I'll be honest, as far as like zombies maps goes, I have less experience with this map than I do with probably some of the other maps. But this is one that I, I genuinely, I just feel like is the most aesthetically pleasing, in my opinion. And... It's just a, has a very interesting storyline. It's a lot of fun to play. So it is my favorite map. Wonder weapons are super fun to play with. So we're going to see if we can complete the Easter egg today. Kind of forgot that I started with raindrop. So I'll go ahead and pop this, I guess. Let's see if we can spin the mystery box over here. I should have probably come over here before activating that raindrop so we could get an actual weapon from the mystery box a few times. But that's all right. I did get uh, Stone Cold Stronghold, which is all right. Go ahead and start this. As much as I like the Bowie knife on this game, I actually don't think it's really all that worth it in uh, in Ancient Evil because we start off with the Strife with the uh, bayonet on it, and then you eventually get one of the hands that have the, the hand melee, and the hand melees are pretty good. All right, so we can go ahead and head to the underworld, but first let's see if we can find a hand. For those of you who have never played this map, there are four wonder weapons in this map that require you to build, very similar to the staffs um, from Origins and the bows from Dreisendrak. They have different elemental types, if that makes sense, um, but they're, you have to find like the, the hand pieces around the map first, and they have different spawn points. Like most of the uh, other buildable wonder weapons in Call of Duty Zombies, there's different spawn locations for each of these parts. So the first thing you have to find is the dormant hand, um, which is just like a hand without an upgrade on it. And they're always indicated by these like little purple kind of subtle spots. But you find that and you pick up the dormant hand. We are going to focus on building the hand of Kauron. Uh, which in my opinion is the best hand and it is a ton of fun to play with. I love the hand of Kauron. It is my personal favorite wonder weapon. So um, part of the reason why this is my favorite map is uh, is because the hand of Kauron is just a ton of fun to play with. So not to say that the uh, the other hands are not fun to play with because they absolutely are. They are the, all of the hands I feel like in Ancient Evil are, are designed really, really well and they're tons of fun to play with. So, okay, so let's pick up the Golden Bridal here. This will spawn in a Giganese and I can probably kill him with the, the specialist weapon here. There we go. All right, we can go build the shield real quick and then I could probably go ahead and grab a couple perks. Go ahead and take a ride on the Pegasus. Now that we're in the underworld, uh, we need to find the parts for the Pegasus strike. Uh, there's a few down here. That I, got. I got the one that spawns up there, and then there's one that spawns down here. It's like the hammer or whatever. And then we can focus on getting the hand of Karon. Okay, let's head down here. We can go ahead and do the initiation of Karon. Um, this is like pretty easy to do. Usually, they just kind of start funneling in. And if you use your Wraith Fires, it gets really easy to kind of cover the area accordingly. You can also obviously shoot them and just kill them that way. Okay, got that done. Let's go ahead and pick up the hand. Got the fan, the fallen hand of Karan. Um, here's another dormant hand. Um, so in order to upgrade the hand of Karan, we actually have to start by getting kills down here in the river. And once you've gotten enough kills, or as you progressively get kills, you'll notice the area become further and further um, red. It'll just get redder and redder. Okay, so I believe this is the last zombie which is good because in order to do the uh, Karan upgrade, uh, you have to drink from the River of Sorrow, which allows you to see these uh, Karan's obols, which are like uh, ferryman taxes, if you will. Um, it's how you pay the ferryman. Karan is like the, the ferryman for the underworld. But while you're in this state uh, of being able to see the coins, uh, you don't regenerate health. So it's, it's best advised to do this uh, when you have uh, like one zombie remaining and you can sort of run around and and get the obols without worrying about uh, about dying. Another really neat thing about this map is that uh, the oracle is like constantly watching over you. She, t she takes note of like when you are running low on ammo or running low on health and she'll just randomly give you health or ammo which is kind of cool. Kind of a neat feature of this map. Okay, so we have all of the the obols. I collected the last two down there near the Pack-a-Punch machine. And now we can go give all the obols to Karan. And then we would like to prove ourselves to Karan. Uh, so this is kind of a neat way for them to introduce the hands. Um, they, they sort of give you like a tutorial room where you 
it, there's you have infinite ammo and and it just kind of teaches you how to use the hands which is kind of a unique way of for them to uh introduce the hands i'm kind of neither here nor there on this uh specific area on this like specific way of introducing the hands but um it's something they've never done before like with a tutorial sort of setup that kind of thing but it's a fun way to just kind of spam the the wonder weapon so you guys can kind of see how it works basically uh the single fire still works the same way as it did before it just kind of dissolves them whenever you hit them with it uh, but the charge attack provides two things it's a very subtle monkey bomb effect so the, the zombies will go towards this puddle and when they reach the puddle it dissolves them they kind of just uh turn into puddles of blood i guess is the best way to describe it and now we have the first upgrade for the hand of Karon. um now to be clear most players generally don't double upgrade the hands um the the process by which uh to upgrade the hands a second time is a little bit tedious and uh one that requires you to have all four hands so it's not very common that uh, you'll see players double upgrade the hands um i will not be double upgrading the hands this game because uh, the, the benefit of double upgrading is mostly just ammo capacity. You get an additional 10 bullets uh, in the hand. Which, is, don't get me wrong, is very, very nice, but uh, only really necessary if you're, going, if you're going for, like, high rounds and stuff like that. Um, but uh, just for, you know, the Easter egg, it's, uh, it should be fine with the 40 rounds that we have. Uh, obviously, it, it does do a few other things. The, uh, the hand gets, like, additional duration on the puddle effect, that kind of thing, so... It's still a nice upgrade to get, but uh, like I said, it's it's a little bit tedious and uh, requires that we build all four hands, so I'm not going to mess with that this game. So here I'm looking for the anvil for the Pegasus Strike. There it is. Okay, so we got the Pegasus Strike. Pegasus Strike is definitely uh, one of the things about this map that is uh, very, very iconic. Most people that have played this map remember it mostly by the, uh, by the Pegasus Strike. It's... Um, an extremely powerful monkey bomb effect. Okay, and once you walk in here after freeing both the eagles, this opens up the pack-a-punch area, but you have to stand like in a a like a quick ritual um, where like a bunch of skeletons spawn in, but the Pegasus Strike makes this very, 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 very easy. So you just place it down and uh, all of the skeletons die quickly. Okay. Now, uh, in order to complete the Easter egg, we do need to uh, complete a few trials for Apollo. So let's go ahead and start a trial for Apollo. Kill zombies with special weapons. Well, that's a very easy one. Homunculus. Well, unfortunately, the homunculus are actually not very good in this map because uh, the Pegasus Strike is just infinitely better. Okay, there we go. So we got the final tier upgrade. Now, if I remember correctly, I think in order to fully uh you basically have to pr prove yourself to apollo is kind of like what the the story is here and um i think in order to fully prove yourself to apollo uh, and get the full blue flame you have to do two of these epic challenges i want to say maybe it's just one i honestly i just can't get enough of this wonder weapon it's just so much fun to play with hold the position let's put down the pegasus strike real quick just let it do its business we even get a max ammo to replace the pegasus strike that is a white father. Die, you stinky. I think, if I remember correctly, uh, we could just do one epic and one legendary reward. And like, if you claim those two, then Apollo's happy. But I kind of want a second legendary or a second epic reward. So we're going for it. If you if you get enough epic rewards, you get um, or rather, it, there's a chance that you get uh, a like a free perk. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of what I'm going for. You can also, I think you can also get free self revives if I remember correctly. Yeah, we got a free perk. The Eternal Flame is lit. We need to take this Eternal Flame with our spear and go find these oil slicks and light them on fire. There we go. The player with the hand of Karon has to come down here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You like shoot the ground and then you shoot the statues as they appear now we're on align the citizens and i believe yeah okay these can be destroyed with the, the spear as well 
I know you can destroy the you can destroy the walls with pack a punch weapons, but I was like, I'm pretty sure you can also destroy them with the spear. Basically, you just have to time. There's a little gear. There's like a cog that goes around, and as long as you uh, time it correctly, you're just kind of locking the cogs into place with your spear. There we go. Okay, now the citizens are all twirling. They're all spinning around. And now we just have to align the citizens, which requires us to throw another spear at a very precise time, preferably without this many zombies alive. I think I would like to go pack up on just this AN-94. That seems like a good use of my spare change. So this step is called align the citizens. Uh, the Black Ops 4 like HUD always gives you like the step name over on the left side. Um, so we're aligning the citizens. There are three statues out here in the middle. They're spinning around. These are the citizens. And you have to line them up so that they're all looking at the, uh, this crystal. And if I'm just being honest, this step is always a little fidgety. Okay, there we go. So this step is notably a little bit easier with the hand of Gaia. Um, so I am going to go ahead and grab the hand of Gaia. I honestly don't remember if it's required for this step, but I'm going to go ahead and grab it and uh, we'll upgrade it. Yeah, there's one right here. There's a hand. And let's go grab the hand of Gaia. Put this in the ritual. Okay, got the hand of Gaia. Now we got to do the upgrade path, which involves us shooting these little trees. And then it gives us a little sprout. Now we got seedling. And there are three of these little seedling trees around the map. Mm, unfortunately, I killed that zombie there. The hands are a little bit unpredictable when it comes to killing zombies because uh, they don't really aim. They just kind of like you shoot them in the general direction of the zombies and they fly towards them, that kind of thing. So it's a little bit weird sometimes. Okay, so we got the uh, three seedlings placed. Now we can go do the Hand of Gaia ritual. Uh, so similar to the Hand of Karan ritual, it gives you like a little tutorial space. And now we get to use the Gaia uh, charge, which is a lot of fun. Um, this one's not nearly as good as the Hand of Karan, in my opinion, but it is still just as visually appealing. Uh, and this is definitely part of the reason why this is my favorite map. It's just like all of the hands are just so much fun to use. Even if like the Hand of Karan is probably the best one, they're all just so much fun to use. Okay, so we have the Hand of Gaia upgraded. I honestly don't even know if it's necessary to upgrade it, but we went ahead and did it. It's like really not that hard to upgrade it, obviously. There is a Giganese alive. Well, I suppose in fairness, the Giganese is something that we need here for this next step. So let's go ahead and try and do this next step. This step is a little bit fidgety, I'll be honest, but uh, there's an Ankh here uh, that we need to get dislodged. Uh, and the only way to dislodge it is by using the big guy, the Giganese's uh, powerful like shield burst thing. I don't really know how to what to how to describe that ability, but all I know is that if you shoot him in his weak spot, it causes him to use it. So that's what we're gonna do. And there you go. Now with this onk, we need to give it to Ra. So this is the portion that requires you to have the hand of Gaia. Uh, normally you like you do these steps and they sort of overlap. Because uh, you need a Giganese to get that thing, the Ankh dislodged, and you need to kill this dig Giganese over here. So we're going to do that step here real quick. There we go. So that's kind of the procedure. It's it's a little bit uh, fidgety at times. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult challenge. It's actually like one of the better Easter egg steps, I feel. Um, just because it's like, it's very simple, but it's easy to mess up. So, all right. The point of that was that guy, that Giganese, dropped a golden spear which is what we need for the next step. So at this point, I am going to go switch out the hand of Gaia uh, for the for another dormant hand uh, because I need the hand of Hamera for this step. Okay, so we got the hand of Hamera. This is still the base one, obviously. So we need to upgrade the hand of Hamera, which is not too, too bad. It's these mirrors around this, the map that you can angle and bounce light off of. Once you bounce the light, it gets shot into a little cup, little cup, little jar thing. And then you melee it with the hand of Mera and it picks up the light ball. And then you gotta take the light ball back to the altar. And that's pretty much it. That's all you gotta do. Now we gotta go upgrade the hand of Mera. And this is, 
this is probably the coolest one if i'm honest in terms of like visually appealing hands uh it certainly makes you feel like a god you just let loose a beam of light not necessarily the most practical because uh it kind of chews through ammo whenever you're holding this ability down and you have to obviously move it around to aim things aim at things the tutorial that it gives you right here is uh obviously you have unlimited ammo so you don't have to worry about that here but in practicality whenever you start using it it uh it definitely chews through ammo relatively quickly so i'll go ahead and uh, activate this trap Yeah, so the hand of Himera starts like shooting out this laser beam. Wait, there we go. Finish that step. That step is always extremely difficult. Let's go pick up the hand of Karon. Now we place this rod here. All we gotta do now is kill an electric zombie. And at this point in the Easter egg, it does actually spawn in extra electric zombies. So the, the objective here is uh, there's, you kill an electric zombie, it charges this, this staff thing and then the reels start spinning. And this line indicates where you want the blue symbol to be. And there's a window where you can see the different symbols. But again, it, you don't wanna line up the symbol with where the window is, you wanna line up the symbol with where that line is. So you have to kind of wait until it's in the right spot. A little bit convoluted, but uh, it's honestly not too bad of a step. Okay, got it rotating again, so we're in good shape there. Okay, there we go, got the second one. Now we need one more. So we need to do one, two, three. Okay, there we go. Now the screen goes shimmy shimmy shakalaka. Now the next challenge is hit your marks. I'll be completely honest with you. Uh, this step in the Easter egg is a lot more fun to do with multiple players. Um, even if you do it with two players, it's pretty fun. But doing it with solo is... Uh, it's still a good time. It's still all right, but it's uh, it's not quite as uh, fun as uh, as you as it could be with, uh, with four players. So basically, um, there are these little like spotlights that we have to go step in and we have to show off our gauntlets respectively effectively is, is kind of how it works so if there are zombies up in the stands you do a single fire shot and it kills them if there are zombies out on the ground then you do a charge shot that kills them that kind of thing but normally with multiple players uh there is a a bit of a rotation normally you would be switching between you know i'm gonna use the red gauntlet and then there's a there's another spotlight over here for the green gauntlet and there would be another spotlight for the for the yellow gauntlet, you know, that so on and so forth, that kind of thing. So it's uh, almost like a dance. Once your screen goes gray, you just run back to this, this front area here in the amphitheater and you wait your turn. I always think that that is a, a red spotlight, so I always end up running a little early, but you can just kind of wait. Honestly, still a very fun step in the Easter egg, even if it's not a, uh, you know, even if it's not four players, even solo, it's still a pretty good time, I'd say. Get yourself a little prize. And a max ammo. Now you place Pegasus Strike here, and Pegasus emerges a giant ballista. Go ahead and kill all these zombies here with the Hand of Karon. And it is at this point that we do actually need the Hand of Oranos, the Wind Hand. The Hand of Oranos is, uh, is pretty good, I would say. It's probably the second best one, um, in all honesty, uh, for like instantly killing zombies because you can pretty easily take out waves of zombies with like a very short channeled attack so like you group them up and then you do a quick short channeled attack and you can kill zombies that way it's not really the best for like spawning zombies i guess just because of the sheer amount of ammo that it goes through okay so this ballista this massive trebuchet thing is uh needs to be lined up let's go pick up the hand of Karhan again okay so at this point we get the apollo's will uh, ignite it again with Apollo's fire and we have to actually run through this trap to get this sort of venomy effect and then this is what launches the trebuchet okay so we set the lady on fire and this is uh this is where we can start the boss fight hey look at that it's finally here okay cool we finally got the hellion salvo took us quite a few box spins um but we've got enough points left over to get all of our pack of punches on this It'll cost us 15k, and then uh, we can go ahead and go to the boss fight. Alrighty, boys. Go to the boss arena. You will not return. Notably, my kit is not necessarily designed or built for using the Helion Salvo. Did not bring a PhD Slider. So, um, you know, I don't know. I can't uh, actually prevent the explosive damage that the, the Helion Salvo deals back to me, so 
it's a little bit unfortunate but we're all right um the regeneration elixir does help out a fair bit with this if you as long as you're moving we're constantly regeneration re regenerating so that's definitely very helpful all right let's get out of there okay now we gotta fight him the hand of Karan definitely helps with like the there's not very many zombies in this step but there is uh, like a handful so hand of Karan definitely helps in that regard okay here's the dude he's gonna like dip down here from time to time and that's where we like have an opportunity to shoot him and this is where we want to use our specialist really just get into him the Hellion Zalo definitely helps uh, quite a bit with the uh, the actual boss fight portion. Um, even when it comes to like killing the Giganises, it's quite a bit easier with the uh, Hellion. The son of Zeus is dead. GG boys. So I just want to say, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Uh, it's a ton of fun to revisit uh, this zombies map. I really, really like Ancient Evil. Like I said, it's my favorite zombies map. Um, I enjoy playing this one for high rounds. I enjoy playing it for the Easter egg. It's just a ton of fun in general for me. So if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like and subscribe button. Be sure to have the bell if you want to know when I post videos. And I really appreciate you guys checking this video out. I'll catch you guys next time.